High Rise Mystery, Chapter 13. We slowly opened the front door and peered out into the hallway. The coast was clear. Norva stepped out to double check. She swung her head dramatically from side to side. Come through, she stage whispered. I pulled on the bag and immediately pulled a muscle round my ribs. I winced. Deal with it, she said without a trace of sympathy. Norva jumped through the doorway to push the bag from the other side. She closed and locked the door behind her. We passed Mrs. Kovaleski's. We passed Mark's. We made it to the lift. Floor 22 complete. Floor 21 to go. Norva reached the for the call button. Don't, I said quietly. It was broken on Friday, remember? We take the stairs. I don't want to, though. Oh, do I have to, she whined. It stinks. I nodded. Move. We opened the door to the stairwell and were immediately greeted by the familiar stench of stale pee. After exchanging glances, we attempted to carry the body down the staircase. The bag hit every step on the way down. It was a strong bag, but it couldn't withstand the constant scraping against concrete. It began to split. As it did, a rubber-gloved hand popped out. Instant, stinging flashback to Hugo's ringed fingers. I blinked away, hot tears. Oh, my days, Hugo, too, forgive us, Norva said, noticing the glove. It's like you're being murdered all over again. It was. It was disrespectful. It was also the right thing to do. Now I knew Norva was correct. Transporting a body any further than this was too risky, too hard, too heavy. Whoever did this did it nearby, and that was terrifying. As I reached out to push the door to floor 21, it suddenly opened in front of me. Mark stood there, chewing, looking up at us. A bottle of Vintonica on his right hand, a burger in his left. I slammed my back against the wall. Norva was rooted to the spot. She dropped her end of the bag immediately. 40% fear, 60% love struck. All right, Mark muttered, his mouth full. He nodded, walked past me and began to take the stairs to the floor above. The door swung shut behind him. He looked down at the fake body. I stepped in front of the bag to somewhat conceal it. Fail. W what's that? He asked, pointing. Norva was silent. I coughed. I clearly had to deal with this. Uh, we're having a tidy up. Looks like a body in there. <laughs> Mark laughed loudly. I could see his lunch in his mouth. Better stay away from you two. Yeah, you, you don't have to do that, Norva said meekly behind me, suddenly finding her voice. Does it look like a body? Really, I wouldn't know, I asked Mark, faking sweetness, feeling brave. What do you know about dead bodies? Mark suddenly stopped laughing. Nothing, nothing at all. He walked up the stairs. I shouted after him. How come you're on floor 21, Mark? Is the lift broken again? I knew it wasn't. Oh, I don't know. I don't think so, he said. He stumbled over his words. I just popped into Serena's, went to get a juice. Quicker than going to better buy, also free from the sauce. He shook the bottle near Norva's face with a smile, and he continued up the stairs, biting his burger as he went. I pushed the door and walked out on 3rd Avenue. A little help next time? Don't crush shame on me, OK? When I'm near him, I can't function. One day you'll understand. I highly doubt that, I said. Open the chute. The entrance to the chute was black, approximately a metre square. The bottom reached my waist, making it around 50 centimetres from the ground. Norva pulled the handle and opened it easily. The smell of death wafted up. I couldn't look down. I bit my lip. Right, grab your end, Norva, I said, readying myself. I'll angle the head. Don't, I repeat, do not push or let go. This is just to see if he fits. Then we'll dismantle him and get... Yeah, I know, I know, Norva broke in, rolling her eyes. I know what I'm doing. Oh, my days! A voice screamed behind us. Stunned, I jumped and let go of the head. Startled, Norva shrieked and let go of the legs. The body slid down the chute. The bag loudly hit the skip at the other end. Norva and I stared at each other, turning to the source of the scream. George. What in fresh hell are you loons up to now? Why are you so jumpy? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, Norva shouted, staring at me, eyes wide with panic. 
There are going to be two more murders when this is exposed. Why did you let go? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with me, I said. You let go too. My stomach burned. Oh, this is bad. This doesn't help Pap in any way. We've got to get Hugo too back. You don't say, I said flatly. You end squared, George shouted, interrupting us. Murders, get who back? You want to clue me in or not? You'll know in about five minutes, mate, Norva sighed. It's really bad this time. She turned to me. Extra bad now. Sirens suddenly rang out below.